So a quick update on this, you can see some things have changed from the last video. We have snapped our stud locations, those are the blue vertical lines, and then we popped that base off. If you remember, we were using that existing base to elevate these sheets so we could get max use out of them. So once we did that, we popped that base off and then we filled it in with these offcut sheets that are just there to kind of make sure the bottom rail doesn't tilt. And we did the same thing up here for the top rail. Now I have this sketch right here that we just sketched out and this is a rough drawing of it. I mean, the measurements are exact, but obviously it's not to scale. We're gonna need eight of these vertical styles right here at 90 and a quarter. Then we're gonna need four of these horizontal rails on the small ones at 30 inches. And then we're gonna need three of the wider paneled mid rails at 46 inches. The top rail is 302 inches. That's gonna be a seam. The bottom rail is the same thing, 302 inches, and also obviously a seam. We're gonna start with our top rail. And I always make these little offcut blocks to find the miter against the wall. So I put a T right here. This is for my top rail, and this is the right side, and this is the left side. Now, this one right here is gonna have that angle on it. I'm just gonna make that angle on my miter saw, line up my blade with that, and cut it. And the left side, I just put a star there because I don't have to do anything there. There's no uh, miter that I have to find. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hold this upright first, and then I'm at 15 degrees, and I'm gonna put that beveled cut on there so it hugs tighter to the drywall. So that'll help us get a tighter fit on that. And then I can take my sample block and then I can find that angle here. So I can see that right there. It's probably a one degree angle. And a, a good trick you can do with this is if you push your blade down, like I'll just lock it like that. And if you push the board up against it, this is a straight flush cut board. You can see the off the offset right there. If it reflects what you have over here, then it's good to go. So that's a little trick you can do, but don't push it really hard up against the blade. Just push it there and just leave it alone. Don't put pressure on it. And you can see that that gap right there matches my pencil line up here. So we're gonna go with that. So those should be perfectly matched up now. And that's it for our top rail. All right, now it'll still work. I'm gonna try to do this on the, on the flat floor right here because it's such a long seam. I don't wanna try to screw it together like this because it's just gonna become weak and snap. So whoever put this floor in was a hack. Just kidding, it was me. But that might actually work to my advantage, that big bump, because then I can get this adjusted. Yep, that's why I did it. That's why I left that bump. All right, that'll work. Just gotta work with the environment you're giving, guys. This is a butcher shop, guys. No. Okay. Okay, that one's good. Ah, can't reach that one if I support it on this short end over here. Okay, this is good now. We're, we're golden now. I'll get this last pocket screw in. I'll clean up that squeeze out. 
and I'll put some uh, pinch dogs in there. So I could probably crank those screws down a little bit more, but to avoid stripping them out, I'm just gonna throw some of these on. These little pinch dogs, they'll just pull that seam tighter while the glue's setting. And then we can get working on the rest of our material cut list. So we have our top rail drying right there with pinch dogs and screws. Same thing here with the bottom rail. And we need to get those side styles like I mentioned. We need eight of those at 90 and a quarter. And we're gonna go ahead and set a stop block on the saw and cut all eight of them. Even though right now our focus is to get this one and this one scribed to fit. So that's what we're gonna do right now. It's really pathetic that I'm still using these stop blocks. These original DeWalt stop blocks, they're really not that good, but I make them work. So we'll set this thing up for 90 and a quarter. I did order a new saw stand and I'm pretty excited about it. It has a really nice stop block feature on it. So I'm gonna be done with this whole DeWalt setup shortly, but I'm just waiting on that to come in. Got my blade down over there, as you can see. And then I can just bring this over and we'll go 90 and a quarter. I can just set it, lock it down, and I can account for that play that's gonna be in there. So when the board hits it, we'll be 90 and a quarter, right down on that line. First thing I'm gonna do for this little setup is chop this factory edge off. Never trust that factory edge, and it's rough most of the time anyways. I'll hit my stop block, cut it, measure it. If it's good, then I'll keep cutting the rest of these, all eight of them. If it's not good, then I'll adjust it. Yeah, we're right at 90 and a quarter, right where we needed to be. So we can get two out of 116. It's always nice when you can max the uh, material usage. So these mid rails will just act as spacers. I'll start on this left end, and then we'll start with a small mid rail, put in another style, do a large mid rail, put in another style, and then back to a smaller one. Now this right here, this is a block I cut. This is just a spacer block that measures 24 and a quarter, or 25 and a quarter actually. And I'll just set this on the bottom rail, and then set that mid rail on it. And then we're, this will be the perfect height, which I want 40 inches for the top of that mid rail. So this will get me perfect right there. All right, our next section is gonna be this longer mid rail. And to help me get this thing lined up, I'll just Mark it right there. So I know that's where my next style is gonna go. Past. Well, that took some finessing, and I think we almost snapped it two times. <laughs> Not really, but it, it got scary. But we got it in place. Now we're bringing some more ladders 
Those ladders are just clamped as stabilizers and then we'll be able to bring these ladders and then glue on top of each style. So we'll just drop some glue and then we'll set the top rail right on top of that. And that should tighten everything up and then we'll be able to hopefully lift this thing up and drop it into place. We'll roll it. I'm going to go down under this light. Now before we set this into place, it's going to be elevated off the floor and it's going to be elevated three and a half inches. So I just ripped these scraps and we're going to tack them into place now. That way we can just lift it up over the existing base on the sides and just set it right there. Ready? Yeah, lift it. Okay. We got to get it up on top of those blocks. Pull, 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 your, pull yours out a little bit in the middle. Ready? It's, it's coming. There it is. There you go. How to work. So that's it for the install on this. Tomorrow we'll do panel molding, crown, and base. So stick around for that. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be a pretty unique panel molding. You'll just have to see it. See it to believe it. We'll see you guys on the next video.